The Thrive City Black History Month celebration took place last weekend and highlighted black literacy, arts, and food. And there to prepare some of the delicious dishes that people enjoyed was Chef Nelson Armand, and he joins us now. Chef Nelson, thanks so much for joining us here on Live oh, in the Bay. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm on Live in the Bay, y'all. <laughs> It's amazing. <laughs> Shout out to all the family. Hopefully they're watching oh, and yeah. supporting. That's for so sure, cool. For sure. So let's talk about this Thrive City event yeah. that happened for Black History Month with the Warriors. You partnered up with the Warriors. Tell me a little bit about that partnership and how the event unfolded. Well, first of all, the event was amazing. You know, it was celebrating Black History Month and the campaign is also beyond 28. Mm -hmm. You know, beyond that date. Black History for us is every day, all day. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really special to see just families together having a good time, in, enjoy. There was a lot of uh, cool little art for, for kids to play with. Um, there was, I did a cooking demo, which was really cool. And there was a lot of beautiful music by wonderful artists right by the Chase Stadium. Like oh, it, looked, so awesome. it looked really cool. Um, but it's great, the partnership is just kind of bringing communities together. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. Um, it's not just, you know, we wanna teach people and educate people on black history and how it's beyond just being African American. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm Dominican nationality, so I'm part of the African diaspora, mm -hmm. but I speak Spanish. And it trips some people out, which is so different, right? But it's showcasing how gorgeous, how beautiful, how large the diaspora is, and how many influences we have within it. So it was, it was amazing, and I still really enjoy the partnership with them. They really put me on the map seven years ago. We did a video called Art Of, and I was part of the Art Of Cooking. Mm -hmm. And it showcased Alomar, showcased me. And that's when I knew, like, this place is really all about community. And that's the Warriors, amazing. definitely. Yeah. Well, you know, let's talk about the cuisine that was featured over there. And that's so awesome. Congrats yeah. on the seven-year partnership with the Warriors. Thank they you. do Thank so you. much for the community. And for you, what were some, what was some of the cuisine and dishes that people experienced at the Thrive City event? So I did two dishes, uh, two wonderful dishes. One is definitely my all-time favorite. The one I still ask my mom and grandma to cook for me every time I go visit is a pollo guisado. Mm -hmm. It's a braised chicken, uh, Dominican style, uh, with bitter orange, a lot of culantro, sofrito. It's just absolutely fantastic. It sounds so good. Yeah, it really, it really <laughs> is. <laughs> and I kind of caught people and got them engaged uh, when I started talking about those stories of watching my mom and grandma in the kitchen. You know, just watching kind of, I wouldn't be in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. I was kind of afraid to be. Uh, but just watching them really be enjoy cooking while listening to merengue and bachata, watching novelas, gossiping on the phone, but still really happy doing it. Mm -hmm. Like the joy it brought. Uh, was re is really beautiful and it still inspires me to this day. I also did a um, more of a West African twist on sweet plantains and you know being Dominican we love our plantains and for me now it, it's crazy because when I first started Alomar and the first video we did with the Warriors it showcased all the cool things I learned in the past as a chef from Mediterranean to Asian style cuisine things I've was known to be something for a top chef, right? Mm -hmm. To be fine dining. Now is really showcasing my roots. Yeah. Like after all these years, Alomar is hitting his nine year anniversary May 1st, um, and Sobre Mesa will be hitting his three year anniversary this Sunday. Congrats. So please come by. But it, it's, it's, it's cool how it has come full circle. And when I joined um, the Thrive City event, like to be cooking my, my food that I really, really enjoy, it makes me the happiest compared to cooking other people's food that I've been doing for years as a chef, mm -hmm. um, it meant a lot to me. So I did these chili glazed plantains with this uh, spiced yogurt. It was uh, spiced hazelnuts on there too. And um, this like avocado cream that was fantastic. Oh my gosh, it so, sounds so good. And speaking of dishes, you brought one with you today. Brought one. It, Tell me about this dish yes, right here. This and is I'll one of our most for our viewers to This see. is one of the most popular dishes at Sobre Mesa. Mm -hmm. This is our Ethiopian spiced butter shrimp with uh, a little bit of pickles, pepper do peppers from West Africa, and some grilled bread. Oh, it sounds so good. Okay, is it spicy? There's is a little bit of heat, yes. A little bit, okay. Not as much. Not too much. All right, well, I'm gonna take a taste, everybody. <laughs> see if I can bite on this whole thing right here. Go for it. Mm, okay. And then this dish is cool because, you know, at Alomar, we're known for our seafood boils and all the crustaceans that you could just dig in with your hands to eat. When I opened Soda Mesa, mm. I wanted to bring something mm -hmm. similar and give a nod to, to my West African roots, but also uh, to Alomar. It's and so delicious. I can taste, like you said, excuse me, everybody, it's so good, but I can taste a little bit of spice. It's not overwhelming. Thank you. The shrimp is cooked perfectly. I love the sauce and how you have fresh veggies and everything in there. Thank you, thank you. So, so good. <laughs> Appreciate that. Oh my goodness, okay, so. This, like you said, is one of your favorite dishes yeah. to cook. I'm so glad you brought that here with us today. For you, what other ways have you, or do you feel like your cooking and you as a chef has affected the community? 
Uh, well, it's the impact we're making. Representations first, right? Yes. Uh, showcasing that you, I've been in this business 23 years. I've been grinding for years, traveled the world. You know, it wasn't easy. It's really hard. Got a lot of burn scars. Look at this one. Wow. Um, just like the, the nitty gritty of things, mo trying to move up the ladder, even with all the obstacles we get, even just being black um, in, a, in, a, in that kind of kitchen. But to really represent myself and always think about how can I uplift others? Mm -hmm. It's not about the Chef Awards anymore for me. It's about what can I do for community? Yeah. How can I keep building community? How can we change the narrative in this industry for all people of color and just for all people, honestly? You know, now as chefs, we're really showcasing who we are deeper than what we want to do. Like, I appreciate all the techniques I've learned in the past, um, but like the food I'm doing now, it, it's past the Dominican side. It's really given back to my ancestors. Mm. And the people have paved the way for me. People have shed their blood for me to be in the position I'm at yeah. now. To own two businesses at 42 years old. And what are those two? What are those two <laughs> restaurants? Uh, Alamar Kitchen and Bar. Uh -huh. um, it's my first baby. It's on Grand Avenue in Oakland, California. And there's also Soda Mesa, which I opened nine days before the first shutdown. Wow, okay. Which was really tough, but we came back, uh, came back strong. We did a lot of community efforts during that time where we were closed, fed a lot of people laid off restaurant workers, mm. frontline workers, homeless, the needy, everyone. Well, you are doing so many amazing things, both in the community with the Warriors. Thank you so much, Chef Nelson, for joining you. us here on Live in the Bay. We appreciate you. It's an honor.